The vestibulo-ocular system has the critical goal of keeping the eyes glued to the target when the head or body moves or tilts. To meet that goal, a signal must travel from the semicircular canals or otoliths through the vestibular nerve to the brainstem vestibular nuclei. From there, the signal goes to the ocular motor nuclei, ocular motor nerves, and extraocular muscles. This pathway mediates the vestibulo-ocular reflex. By counteracting head or body movements, it keeps the eyes constant in space. In doing so, it allows the foveas of the eyes to remain fixed on a stationary target so you can see it distinctly. Suppose your head or body moves to the right. A vestibulo-ocular signal will move the eyes conjugately to the left. Too fast for you to detect the shift. Now let us see what would happen if you were to sustain acute unilateral damage to the inner ear or vestibular nerve here on the right side. Both eyes would drift toward the damaged right side. The brain will now automatically try to reset the eyes toward the center of the orbit. As a result, you will develop a compensatory jerk nystagmus with its fast phase to the left. We call that a left beating jerk nystagmus. Acute damage to the labyrinths or vestibular nerve on one side, usually after a viral infection, will knock out the vestibulo-ocular reflex on that side. The best way to bring out that deficit is to perform the head impulse test. Grasp both sides of the patient's head about the ears and briskly rotate the head first to the right, then to the left. If the vestibulo-ocular reflex is working, the eyes will automatically move rapidly to the opposite side, too fast for you to detect any eye shift. But now suppose that there is damage to the right peripheral vestibular pathway. When you move the patient's head to the right, the eyes move with the head. A split second later, you will see leftward conjugate saccades in both eyes. Moving the head briskly to the left will not elicit such a saccadic movement because the vestibulo-ocular reflex is intact on that side. Such a unilaterally positive head impulse test is strong evidence of an ipsilateral central vestibular lesion. On the other hand, a unilateral peripheral vestibular lesion will have a negative head impulse test. The nystagmus pattern in an acute peripheral vestibular lesion is distinctive. Notice that the nystagmus has its greatest amplitude in gaze opposite to the lesion side. Here is another look at this nystagmus pattern which is typical of acute unilateral peripheral vestibulopathy. Finally, to be really sure of a peripheral lesion, the positive head impulse test and the unidirectional horizontal torsional jerk nystagmus should be accompanied by the absence of skew deviation or ataxia. We'll look at skew deviation later in this video. The normal vestibulo-ocular reflex also comes into play during vertical head or body movements. For example, if your head or body moves upward, a vertical vestibulo-ocular signal will move the eyes downward. When your head or body moves downward, the same process happens except that different ocular motor nuclei are recruited to move the eyes upward. If you were to sustain damage to one part of the vestibular nuclei on both sides, the eyes might drift upwards and trigger an automatic fast repetitive downward movement of the eyes, an oscillation we call downbeat nystagmus. If a different part of the vestibular nuclei on both sides were lesioned, the eyes might drift downward and generate a restorative, fast, upbeat nystagmus as you see here. We must also consider what happens to the eyes when your head or body tilts. If your head tilts to the right, the inner ear on that side becomes activated and sends a signal to the vestibular nuclei and through the MLF to connect to the INC. 
As a result, the right eye moves upward and in torts, and the left eye moves downward and ex torts. In this way, your eyes remain aligned to the horizon. Suppose you were to sustain unilateral damage to the left MLF in the midbrain. The INC will now receive unbalanced input. As a result, you would develop an ocular tilt reaction. Here is how that goes. Your left eye would rotate counterclockwise and move upward. Your right eye would rotate counterclockwise and move downward. You would not notice the torsional movement of your eyes, but you would have vertical diplopia. This phenomenon is called skew deviation. Any unilateral or asymmetric diencephalic or brainstem lesion can cause skew deviation. It also occurs promptly but temporarily after acute vestibular nerve damage. Skew deviation often consists of a very subtle hypertropia which the patient may report as blurred rather than double vision. This misalignment is often overlooked unless careful technique is applied. A bilateral lesion in the region of the interstitial nucleus of Cajal may cause an oscillating type of skew deviation that we call seesaw nystagmus. Watching this patient's eye movements can make you seasick. One eye is moving up while the other is moving down. This condition is called seesaw nystagmus. It is an eye oscillation made up of two slow phases, so it is a form of pendular nystagmus. Seesaw nystagmus is a sign of dysfunction of the diencephalon, the way station between the cerebral hemispheres and the brainstem. Because foveation time is reduced, patients will report blurred vision. If it begins after age five, patients will also report seeing objects oscillate, a symptom called oscillopsia. If you were to sustain severe bilateral damage to the inner ears, vestibular nerves, vestibular nuclei, or their connections, you would lose your vestibular ocular reflex on both sides. In that case, you would not be able to compensate for head movement by a counteracting eye movement. Any head or body movement would cause you to have blurred vision because your fovias would no longer stay on the viewed target. You might also report that those viewed objects appear to jiggle, a symptom called oscillopsia. That is what happened to this patient who was treated with gentamicin for a serious infection. This patient told his doctors that my vision becomes blurred whenever I move my body or my head. He can pursue a moving target very smoothly and completely. He has no nystagmus. His eyes are aligned. But in the head impulse test, when his head is moved rapidly to the right or left, his eyes make a rapid conjugate movement in the opposite direction. Such refixational saccades occur because his eyes are being carried along with his head movement instead of reversing direction to maintain fixation on the viewed target. These corrective saccades are a sign of failure of the vestibulo-ocular reflex. When this patient reads the Snellen chart with his head still, he has normal acuity. But in the dynamic visual acuity test, when he views the letters with his head shaking, visual acuity declines because his eyes cannot remain steady on the viewed letters. This decline in visual acuity with head shaking is evidence of failure of the vestibulo-ocular reflex to compensate for head movement and keep his eyes still. It is caused by a lesion in the pathway from the inner ear to the brainstem ocular motor nuclei. A common cause is inner ear toxicity from aminoglycoside use. This patient was treated for a serious infection with tobramycin. The deficit is permanent.